All right, so um, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining these uh, Women Being Talks number 10. Uh, today, uh, the topic is how to let nature help us find our way out of lockdown. And we have uh, Anna Wood and Susanna Jeskova. Uh, right. <laughs> perfect. Uh, um, so we are going to, to, to have this, they are going to uh, speak with us about um, the benefits that nature can give, give to us while we are getting out of this um, of, of, uh, lockdown, of course. So um, Susanna and, and Anna, uh, welcome. And I, I would like to ask you uh, to introduce yourselves uh, first, please. <laughs> so Anna, do you want to start? <laughs> Go on. I'm Anna. I'm based in Edinburgh. I'm I'm very lucky that I live right by the sea, and right by woodlands. So I'm very I feel very privileged in this um, pandemic crisis that we've been going through. I've had easy access to nature. I <clears throat> run a business called Wonder Women, um, where I take small groups of women out into the wild to connect with themselves and with nature and share nature connection. That's me. Hi everyone. Susie, your turn. Okay, um, thank you. So um, thank you for inviting me into this. Um, uh, I used to live in Edinburgh uh, and I used to be um, Anna's neighbour or <laughs> used to meet quite often and we're friends. Uh, now I live back in the Czech Republic where I come from and um, I've got four children and um, I miss the sea very much because I used to live <laughs> right by the sea as well when I lived in Edinburgh with Anna and um, I used to swim every day in the sea which um, was um, a part um, of my life that I got used to and it was uh, a ritual that um, I'm missing every day but uh, I'm developing new rituals and it's it's okay, but I do miss the sea, I have to say. Um, and I'm trying to uh, be a good mother. I've been at home for 10 years uh, now, working part-time, and slowly I'm getting back to um, uh, a point in my life where I will go working uh, full-time again. And I'm kind of... Uh, finding what uh, I would like to do in my life and one of the themes or topics that I would like to work with is um, very similar to what Anna does, <laughs> uh, making uh, women or men, um, but people are on the whole more connected with uh, the natural surroundings uh, around themselves with the outdoors and uh, uh, to make them understand and perceive that it actually is very very natural for us to be there and it helps us in great many ways so yeah that's me <laughs> well so you are both like people who are very connected to the outdoors and uh, to nature so how always the lockdown impacted uh, your livelihood how have you been like dealing with the fact that we have to stay indoors when you both are absolutely outdoors people? I have been finding that, um, especially at the beginning, I found being inside and being near a screen really overwhelming, just scrolling through the news and through, scrolling through the panic and the fear um, that people were projecting and expressing on social media and, and the news. I found that really unsettling and and the ability to go swimming in the sea once a day um, has been amazing. And and I, I have to say that whenever I went out, everything, you know, the further I was away from screens, the better I felt. It showed me that the seasons are moving on, the life, the, you know, the world, this planet keeps turning, nature is getting better. And actually everything is okay. It's it's our problems. We are creating this. We are at the source of the whole crisis in this, in, on this planet. I truly believe that nature has all, <coughs> has all the answers and um, it provides us with so much wisdom. 
that we just need to listen to. We just need to slow down and delve into into that wisdom. Um, and yeah, all the answers are there. We just need to slow down. So I feel going out in even in that limited time that we've had in this country has really helped me stay sane <laughs> and keep the balance right. How about you, Susie? Uh, yes, I, I agree. I, I feel it the same way. And actually, I felt that for me, um, it actually helped me to get out more <laughs> than before the lockdown. I don't know how, how you had it in Britain, but we here, we couldn't go outside, but we could go uh, into the woods or into, into the kind of um, wild nature. It was without any restriction but we couldn't go out into town or we could go shopping but that was it we couldn't go anywhere where there would be more people and even in because where i live it's a city um or a big town inside the mountains or surrounded by mountains and even in the mountains where usually a lot of people go like cycling and stuff they, would, they wouldn't recommend to go on the on the path that normally people go so um people kept going to kind of more hidden places and stuff like that. But um, uh, I felt I still had the freedom <laughs> because I could go out um, into the woods and we have woods not far from where I live. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was actually, um, it gave me more opportunities uh, for myself and more time outside. I have four children uh, and it's really <laughs> stressful every morning when we have school. Get them all out. Um, sometimes my husband is at home, sometimes he's not because he works on shifts and he, if it's his work day, he leaves before everyone else uh, wakes up. I wake up at the same time when he leaves. So it's very often it's up to me to distribute everyone <laughs> or like let, let them go. <laughs> and um, I used to when my i've got the the last child is two years old and when he started finally started sleeping better at night i was able to get up in the morning and do a little bit of exercise which i was like hoping to do for a long time but i i need a good time sleep and when i don't have it i'm not able to get up <laughs> so finally i started getting up in the morning and then um i wanted to go outside to spend some time outside but uh, still getting up at school, uh, with school, I would have to get up really early and it, I, I still couldn't do it. But with this lockdown and no school, it meant that I could get up uh, at the same time like before when I used to get the children out and go out for an hour into the woods and then come back with all the children still asleep. <laughs> my, my oldest... <laughs> My oldest son had the directions that if the youngest one um, wakes up, he should go to her and tell her mom is coming back in 10 minutes or something. He's quite good at it. Uh, and we have neighbors also that live um, downstairs. So like if anything happens that I know that they're safe, you know, I would I always lock them down. But my neighbor know, knows I'm going out into the woods um, for some time in the morning and that's fine. Um, so I would go for, um, 45 minutes approximately and I would come back very very relaxed and you know um, I, I actually didn't know how much uh, it means to me until yesterday I couldn't go because my husband was away and my oldest was uh, sick and uh, I, I was really really tired uh, because I I was due my period which I didn't know because I didn't look into my calendar and I just wasn't able to get up and it was the first time um, since I started doing it and I had such a shit day that I just realized how much it actually helped me that it's my ther therapy every day you know I I don't I, I maybe sometimes I run but not usually I walk and it's my maybe three kilometers it's not far away but just being there and you know I go to my kind of favorite spot and I slow down I do a little relaxation meditation whatever and um and then I walk back sometimes I find mushrooms now or sometimes I get some um you know green stuff for tea or <laughs> cotton, some herbs and and I just come back and I'm so relaxed um, and yeah, it, it's similar with sea swimming, and I think the sea swimming has a very good. Um, um, it's, it's very good because it's quick. It gives you 
uh, energy and you can go there for five minutes swim and you're just feel invigorating and, and very, very good. And it's, it's a fast way to gain energy. But since I don't have the sea here, <laughs> um, I, I'm very helpful that I could do this. And actually now the children here are back to school and I couldn't do it. I thought, okay, I will not be able to do it. But because I got used to it, I actually, now I'm getting up half past five and uh, I can do it now because I got used to it and I really kind of crave it. I want it. Um, and it's a ritual that is now in, in my life. And, um, and I'm very grateful for that because I wouldn't have it. Uh, if it wasn't for the lockdown, I would never start getting up an hour earlier before setting, up, setting them to school if I didn't know how much it helped me. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. It's so important to hold on to these things that we've learned in lockdown as well, isn't it? It's, I feel since the lockdown was slightly lifted here, mm -hmm. I feel, you know, and we're not doing much on top of what we were doing before but we are seeing friends occasionally my children meet up with friends now and i feel already um that it's getting hectic <laughs> and I that's know, where it's so important to invite that calm into it and 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 keep these rituals alive and not let them go away Hold on i to. i agree and it's isn't it uh very like it, it seems kind of wild to me that you know in the lockdown I, I felt so much that it actually it was so much needed because in the time before the lockdown I was like sometimes I was thinking oh my god something has happened how how is it how have I become so kind of going from one thing to another to another to another you know not be, having time to just sit down and just be you know like because obviously four children and um I, I want them to do hobbies or whatever and some of them are still small so I have to drive them and you know there's like different parent meetings and stuff like that so there's a lot of things going on even if I don't work regularly like um, full time but I, I had full time schedule every day and I was like oh my god I, don't, I can't do it anymore and then the COVID-19 happened and I was like okay <laughs> this happened so now I can calm down and I can slow down and, and it in this respect it's been really really good and now I'm feeling I'm slowly getting back to the old rushing you know routine and I don't want to do it and it's really really hard to stay in the mindset that actually it's good to have less you know less is more in this respect less activities mm -hmm. less blah 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 and um yeah so <laughs> I agree good learnings good learnings yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, I'm, I'm unmuted. So, <clears throat> uh, is, I, I think that we can agree that you both found opportunities in this experience while we are in lockdown. We were able to slow down, to connect maybe with other parts of ourselves that we feel that we might have been like disconnected during, like previously. How do you feel about that? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I think for me, uh, I found out that I need more time with myself at the first, um, you know, um, that's the first thing for me. And now uh, if I give, you know, it's like with love, I think if you give enough love to yourself, uh, you are able to love others and you're able to receive love from others. So if you give you know um quality time to yourself then you can share quality times with your friends and family so um definitely uh, with this i i felt that it um the lockdown and um the coronavirus really <laughs> helped me in this respect to you know that i need time for myself and when i have it i'm um much more um friendly to <laughs> my surroundings I'm a much better mother you know to my children and um much kinder person really <laughs> I, yeah i can only agree with all of that what i I've, I've learned as well is that it's it's so much about being honest with yourself and with others 
honest with yourself of just accepting what's going on in your mind and in your body, accepting that when you need rest to just take it and be selfish with that as well. And also to just accept that life comes in waves and the sea has taught me so much there, but <laughs> that when you feel shit, just let it be, let the tears come and let it happen and then ride the high when that comes again. And no one's ever the same on, on a different day. We all go through hormonal changes every month. It's, it's all a big cycle. It's all a bit big wave that keeps coming back. Um, so just accepting that and being honest and honoring those, those phases and those feelings. Mm -hmm. And also being honest with other people um, about yourself. I feel going going back into some kind of social normality. Um, yeah, being honest about, no, today is not the day to meet up. I don't feel like it. Sorry, <laughs> I need to say no to protect myself. And to, yeah, I think it's, it's brought up so much honesty. Honesty in partnerships, honesty with your children and specifically with yourself. Mm -hmm. it's so important we we trick ourselves into thinking things that we want to believe about ourselves we trick ourselves into thinking that we need to be busy and we don't if we just mm -hmm. listen to what really goes on inside um yeah i think honesty has stood out for me in, in learning about mm -hmm. life generally <laughs> that's, that's nice uh-huh you did great i also um i was thinking about how you in the beginning how you described the social media i um actually i was um uh, by my own free will i decided not to make media because i was i when it started i was following it and then i thought okay it brings fear to me and i don't want to live in fear so i just stopped and i didn't I, I thought no Facebook, nothing. So it, it felt in a way uh, that I was cut from the rest of the world. But at the same time, I I realized I don't uh, mind. You know, that's what you say, Anna. That you need to be busy. You need to be with friends. And you sometimes you think, oh, I'm going to miss some event that somebody posts on Facebook or something. But I didn't actually mind i was with my children i had my garden i was gardening a lot because um obviously we couldn't go anywhere so i was happy that i could um give energy to my to our garden and to my children but uh it also meant that i i felt really happy you know i didn't have the fear from the illness and only radio we listen to the radio a lot because my husband loves it and so sometimes on the radio i i i heard the, the news but otherwise i i didn't really know how many new positions or anything and i felt happy about it, that this and and what, what i got from this until today was that i um stopped the not that i would stop facebook altogether that's not true but i'm there so kind of little and i use it when i need it which might find might sound a little bit kind of um that i'm just using the the good good things and not replying to messages mm, i'm replying if somebody messages me on messenger i can see that and i reply but i don't check my you know who on facebook who wrote something or um so i i have i don't know hundreds and something new um you know, blinking there, that's <laughs> new, uh, what is it called in English? Um, but that's a, a message, yeah. But that's such yeah. A, it's a good thing, you know, I think these these social media were meant to be tools for us, tools yes, to exactly. enrich in our lives. But actually, we've grown slaves to them, and it's ridiculous. And I think this time has given us this, okay, yeah. let's step back and reconsider what this is all about. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, yes exactly. social media is it's a tool to keep connected and i'm so exactly. grateful and for it that i can keep in touch with you abroad <laughs> family abroad i think we can exactly. be all in the same boat yeah. then. but um yeah it, let's not be slaves to it again <laughs> yeah 
great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You actually find out you don't really need to follow all of that, who you know, all of the things that go on and stuff, because you have so many things going on in your own life and yeah. So no, finding some regular times to just completely step back from it is amazing. I've decided that I'm from now on doing um screen free weekends to just <laughs> really have that special time with family and real life connections rather mm -hmm. than having my phone on me all the time we don't need it it's and it's so good to have that in a weekly schedule or even if it's a morning routine or an evening routine to not have you know to get up and not be on your screen scrolling mm -hmm. but to have have a meditation first have a coffee first wake up properly first before mm -hmm. you go into on your screen or in the evening an hour before you go to bed just to put it away it's not coming into the bedroom ignore it and you'll sleep so much better oh, oh yeah all of these habits are so healthy and yeah i think we've all been experimenting with them over the last little while that's true we just have to keep it up yeah. <clears throat> absolutely so, um, i wonder if i could say a few th um just observe a few things really about the conversation that's um, just been happening. My name's Sue. I, I seem to be older than everybody else that's has spoken so yes. far since I joined you. And so my um, my children are grown up. Um, Lucky uh, you. Be, be, well, being a mum, I have to say, doesn't really end there. I'm sure other no. people have said that to you. But, um, but I do remember the times that, that both of you have described. Um, I'm, I'm a runner, I'm a cyclist, um, I'm lucky that I live in the country um, in Scotland in rural Perthshire so I'm surrounded by beauty now. Um, but when my children were young, and this is nothing to do with lockdown but it's pertinent I think, um, uh, I was working, my husband was working, um, we didn't really have any childcare so we, um, we, we were like a kind of a, a relay team in our, in our childcare. Um, and um, something has to give, basically. Um, like um, you, I think your name is Susanna. Um, the, uh, I was involved, you know, in, in lots of you know things to do with the children, and um, uh, I'm not sure how important that all is actually now, looking back. But um, but but I was, and so um, my saviour was um, running. All I needed to do, I only needed a pair of shoes. I only needed somebody to volunteer to watch the children for 20 minutes and I could get outside for 20 minutes. And so um, all of those observations that you've made as, a, um, as a, a result of lockdown, I would say hang on to them because um, through the years, um, the things that have helped me cope with um, the harder times, I would say is being able to get outside and exercise, and um, and also my women friends, having somebody that you can talk, which I suppose is a little bit about um, what um, the other one was saying about honesty, is that we all need some, we all need people that we can just say, this is mm. shit, you know, I, 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 I like this, and, <laughs> and know that it's actually, nobody's gonna explode or, or be harmed or anything like that, and so, um, those are the things that I, I, I have um, have been really pertinent for me. Um, in terms of lockdown, um, as I said, I'm I'm really lucky to be surrounded by such beautiful countryside. Um, the worst aspect for me is that I um, only ever see my grown-up sons on the screen at the moment. One's in Edinburgh, one's mm -hmm. in Aberdeen. Um, and so that's not so good, but hopefully that will change um what i'm have been surprised by and you were alluding to a little bit is that the opportunities that have come through lockdown and i know that we've got probably you know the whole way in which our society is organized is going to be really quite challenged over the next while uh, i don't know if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing we'll have to wait and see um, but there are certain opportunities that have presented themselves to me during lockdown. Now, I'm actually semi-retired. I, I, I've spent most of my career working in social work and community development. Um, but now I have a little job in a distillery. Um, I'm a tour guide in a distillery, and it's lovely. I go to work in a beautiful place. I speak to people who want me to speak to them. Um, uh -huh. I get 
to practice um, my my poor French and my better German, and um, <laughs> and it's great. It's great, and um, so it's um, uh, you know. What uh, whiskey does? What whiskey is it? <laughs> it's a it's a, a Glen Torrit single malt whiskey. It's the oldest working distillery in Scotland, founded in seventeen seventy five. I won't I won't treat this at all. But um, I'm furloughed at the moment. We're not working. Obviously, tourism is 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 not um, an aspect of life here at the moment. So I've had a lot of time on my hands, um, and um, I've discovered a few things. Um, and again, they're all quite pertinent to the thing conversation that's going on here. I think um, we have a lovely garden. Um, my attitude to the garden during my busy life is always just to try and keep it tidy so that we're not a disgrace. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, given a busy life, you know, um, you have to prioritise things. And so the garden has always been something that just needs to be kept tidy. I've had lots of time um, with my husband, actually, to, um, to spend in the garden. We've had a beautiful few months here, actually. The weather's been great. And I'm growing vegetables. And so in terms of the connection to um, the environment, if you like, to, 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 to nature or whatever you want to call it, to the land, um, I've actually discovered something that has never been an aspect of me. Um, I, you know, I get up every morning, make a coffee, go out in the garden and talk to my vegetables. Um, <laughs> I'm becoming a sort of fatty old lady, lovely. Um, so, and, and that brings its own joy, I suppose. And so, um, I suppose that speaks to the sort of quietness that you were um, that you were alluding to. Um, the other thing is, I don't know. I go through peaks and troughs with social media about it being a form of connection, but also a form of um, the devil's work. You know, so um, I don't. I haven't come to a conclusion about that, but I have. That this is an opportunity to speak to people that I would never normally have met. And also, um, there's a, a, a chap that I have come across before. Um, he's a very, very good yoga teacher in, um, in Glasgow. I've been to one of his, one or two of his, um, his workshops before. I can never usually do um, yoga with him because his workshops are very few and far between. Uh, when he does come over to the east of Scotland, they're always booked out and you can't get on them. I can do yoga with Mark three or four times a week now because I do it via my screen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a sort of, it's kind of like a, a yin and yang, isn't it? It's kind of like um, these things that we've got, these uh, computers and the, 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 the web and all of this which can actually really be quite destructive. At a time like this, there have been whole other uses that, um, that we, can, we can put to them. Absolutely. My yeah. fear though, just for the last thing, is my fear um, because um, others have talked about the calmness and the stillness and that we don't have to um, you know, live these busy lives is that actually we will just go back to that and I think there are signs of that happening already you know in Scotland we're just moving at the moment I think between phase one and phase two of the kind of recovery plan from from lockdown um, and you know one of the banes of my life as a cyclist is that um, uh, a lot of motorists on there I'm a motorist as well um, but um, it, you take your life in your hands in this country every time you go on the on the roads even though we live on rural roads here and actually at the beginning of lockdown, when everybody was really quite fearful and, and sticking to um, the rules very, very carefully and a lot of people weren't at work, the roads have not been um, emptier for years. And so um, walking, running, cycling became a much, much better experience. And also those people who were driving were driving with an awful lot more care and courtesy than they tended to otherwise. Um, and what I've noticed the last couple of weeks is that is that the, all that really, really sort of bad, selfish behaviour on the road, it's all back again because people mm. are rushing off to work. Um, uh, they're not taking time. And so that, that's a very short time that, that that slide is happening. Now, I know that maybe motor behaviour isn't a, necessarily the best uh, indicator, but I just kind of fear 
that although we may um, that we may all think isn't that you know we must take these lessons forward that actually the slide back into um, to be yeah. rather sort of self-centered life is mm -hmm. Is, is just going to happen because in terms of the, me using that word self-centered I live in a, a, a large village um, and we're certainly not alone I think um, most communities like this have actually really um, come together during lockdown you know we have a local come and help yourself food thing um, the post office is organized with volunteers to help um, deliver stuff to people who are shielding um, just on and on and on that um, the, the, um, the circumstances have, have encouraged people to think more about other people, not within their own circles, but people who they don't know. And that has been a wonderful thing. And I'm, I'm very fearful that we'll lose that. So those were just all my kind of like observations around some of the thing, the conversations that I'm, I'm oh, hearing. Thank you for sharing, Sue. Engaging. Yeah. There's you know, good and bad, lots of learnings. <laughs> and I was going to ask Susie, living in the Czech Republic, and I know my family living in Germany, and the, what I hear, the, it hasn't been as dramatic as in the UK, and things are, they are truly back to normal um, mm -hmm. by the sounds of it. I wanted to ask you, Susie, what, what do you feel, and is it possible to hold on to these things? Do you feel when you go out, watch people go to shops, go to school again? What does it look like right now? <clears throat> it's a tricky question. Uh, as Sue, thank you Sue for sharing with us. As Sue was saying um, that she fears that we might slip back to our old self. I, I have the same fear. I can feel it already on myself, uh, even though I think about it really uh, deeply and I have cut down on some children's activities and stuff like that, so that we are not rushing so much, but still I can feel it. Um, I feel that people are, have uh, been more, more involved in uh, thinking about other people uh, which are not in their circles, as Sue was saying, what's happening uh, in the countryside in Scotland and probably in Edinburgh as well. Uh, I felt really deeply that this was happening here in our town, uh, that people were um, trying to help um, via <clears throat> the social media, you know, to go shopping for elderly or to ask if there's anyone who needs um, anything um, done in their garden or whatever, if you don't want to go out. So, um, I think still the feeling of like, being more open to, um, you know, having a helping hand if, if one needs it, it's still uh, in the air more than it used to be. So hopefully it's going to stay <laughs> on. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But the community feeling, nice. Yeah, the community feeling has changed and, and I can still feel it's, it's in the air. Um, I think for me, uh, people have started to hang out more locally because a lot of people have traveled, you know, to different countries and we are near Germany, near the border. So um, people uh, used to go shopping to Germany and um, so, so now a lot of people have realized that they don't need to go so far. They can stay locally and they, you know, they can still get um, good food and uh, um, me, myself, I found that I can be connected more with my friends that live nearby. Um, and as Susie was saying, we all have circles in which we kind of uh, <laughs> um, live and function. And the illness, the COVID-19 has helped me to get out of the circles and to maybe, you know, uh, create new circles with new, new friends. Uh, which are more locally based, which is great because 
I don't want to drive everywhere. And now uh, most of my children, uh, most of my sorry, most of my friends live in the other part of the town. So I did um, uh, use my car a lot to go and see them. And now I I don't. We we go and we we created a group uh, playing ball here in the neighborhoods uh, on the playground next to our house so there's like four or five families that get together and once a week they play softball and um nice, it, yeah. yeah it's nice yeah. to stay more local yeah definitely yeah. susie uh, there was susanna who wanted to share shall mm -hmm. we give her an opportunity yes yes and others of course as well hi hi hi, hi. hi i'm susanna and i live in um in uh, rural Lincolnshire. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it was interesting what you were saying, Sue, because it, in a way for me, it's been completely the opposite. I was living a very calm life. Um, I had deliberately, I had over the years had got into a really calm routine, um, but it all changed um, during lockdown, it went the opposite way, really. Um, I'm, I'm a full-time student now after many years as a teacher and the university just shut suddenly. It was like I had two jobs there and the jobs were not going to be furloughed. So I had no income. I had no access to the libraries. I was completely left thinking, what do I know? I had assignments due. And then I had to start making some really big decisions. Um, I had to intercalate my studies, so stop them. And I'm going to start again in January. I just couldn't, I could not work under those conditions. So it just completely threw me. My sleep cycle went, I, I was, I was, I'm still doing it. I'm st waking up, at, going to sleep about five in the morning and then waking up at one or two in the afternoon. Um, and um, I live with chronic illness, so I can't just go out any time. Um, and we also had a big family of six, six adults living in the house. Uh, so it was, there was no space. I, I couldn't just dash out. In, in 80 days, which, was, which uh, was yesterday, I went out three times. And I absolutely cannot manage without the woods and the sea. And I... Uh, we, what happened, you, you were talking about sort of lo your local area becoming more helpful. I found that our local area became a whole lot of keyboard vigilantes. So-and-so went out of their house. So they were straight on the village page saying somebody had gone out because they were so, it, it was unbelievable, like, unbelievable. And, and because we had six people living in our house, we were really careful to, for the right person to go for food and so on. And I went out three times and I felt guilty every time. And twice mm. they were to the woods. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and the third time was to see a friend who is, is an overseas student and she was down. And I was extremely concerned about her. So I made a half an hour trip to go and see her. So um, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out how I can get onto the other side. Because I don't going out anymore um, at all. Uh, I have a fantastic family. I've, I've got a husband who... And he's been working more than ever. He's doing online teaching all the time so it feels like there's always somebody in the house mm -hmm. um, because the pupils are you know you can hear the lessons going on and my daughter's a musician and she's teaching online so it's uh it, it's just my everything everything just changed completely and in my head I felt so isolated although before the lockdown I had deliberately made my life more contemplative so I don't know if I can get back into teen now. I just feel like I can't go out. I just, you know, I, I hadn't been out of the, the property at all in, in, I think it was um, 53 days or something like that. So. Uh, what, what's the um, guidance in England at the moment? Are you, are you about going out? I mean, are the, are the vigilantes still watching they are very angry. They're very, very angry people. And I think this is the thing 
uh, that I've noticed is, so we have um, alongside um, the very variable lockdown of changes, uh, we've also had people protesting uh, about um, racial, um, yeah, yeah. So, a, a, you know, really bad. The, the the county that I live in is very racist. Mm -hmm. So it's almost all conservative, and what used to be BNP then became UKIP, and now it's all conservative, and they are vicious. Mm -hmm. uh, th th this is the place where Polish immigrants were l almost to the point of being lynched. So it's horrible and i am a mixed heritage person i'm half indian and i'm half finnish so i look around me thinking I, I pass for white but i'm like you guys are just so much there's so much hatred so there's been a lot of that online and i just i, I just can't i don't understand it i don't accept that um that's my life so i feel in a way it's like people are squeezing yeah. the joy out of people mm -hmm. and I, I my job has been in working with vulnerable children children who are excluded from school and I and I've seen them go through all of that uh, in this society and it hurts them mm -hmm. so I, I I don't know how uh, I can't envisage it right now actually I'm very creative so but I've been uninspired um, I like sewing and I like drawing and I like painting, but it, the, I, I get that inspiration at 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't sustain that level of ridiculousness, really. So I'm just yeah. hoping that maybe I'll just go sit in the woods because that's allowed now. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, it's almost like it's allowed, so I don't want to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, so thanks for hearing me out. <laughs> You've had the rug pulled from underneath you in terms of your usual um, engagement with stuff, your studies, being at the university, you know, those kind of like, you know, we all need to be anchored in things and, and, and you know, that whole rug's just been kind of like overnight pulled from underneath you. So that must kind of like make it doubly kind of difficult to deal with the, the, the sort of um, these elements that are going on around you that you just kind of think, oh, you know, it, it does feel like that, Sue. It very much feels like that. And I'm not um, someone who would be in this sort of a circle ever. I'm not a Zoom person. I find it really tiring. I'm autistic and I late diagnosed autistic. Um, so I've had a career and a profession and so on and, ha and I have a family. But I feel I, I don't. I, Zoom is not my place. <laughs> not I, mine either. So it's <laughs> it's not mine is it not? Either. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> Oh my God. Know, but I, oh. I, I, I agree this uh, the one thing that this period has brought out in people is so much anger and so much fear and people look you up and down they judge you for going out it, I feel so sorry and I, I can only grasp that it it's it's fear yeah it's fear and anxiety in people that brings these things out this uncertainty I've had people shout at me in the streets for riding my bicycle <laughs> in the wrong really? place. And it's, yeah. I, Where do you I, live, Anna? Where do you I live? live? I live in Edinburgh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that it must be, all, I think I, I have a huge sense of sort of sadness for those who live in cities right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I used to, I, I grew up in India in a very large, with two very large cities. And then I lived in Birmingham and we moved to the countryside about 18 years ago. And in a way you can keep to yourself here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you don't have to um, live in, there's no hub in the village. So we'd have to travel about half an hour to go to Lincoln, which is our nearest city. But I, I, I have this sense of panic almost. If we'd been living in the city now, yeah, uh, this could have been so much worse. And I, I just have this sort of crushing sense mm -hmm. of what it must be like for people who are living, particularly women, um, because of the... Uh, I am a realist and I've worked with a lot of children who live in some very awful families. Um, because of pressure and the violence that that is shown and I cannot imagine what it's like to be a woman um, without an income in a home with a man or whatever who is 
beating you. That, I, it just blows my mind to think, what can I do? And that's what worries me. Is there something I can do? Because that will be going on here as well. But I yeah. think the, the fear and the threat is so great in cities. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, used, I used to work for Women's Aid um, for, for quite a few years, actually. And so I kind mm -hmm. of take an interest in matters to do with domestic abuse and um, uh, uh, calls to um, domestic abuse helplines have, have trebled during lockdown. Yeah, I've seen that, yeah. Um, and you also, also know that actually in terms of what you can do about that in terms of things like refuge space and that, there's none. You know, it, it's you know it isn't there so, because everywhere is full so um i share your um your sort of anxieties around um, women and children who are, are living in in um in uh, in fear because lockdown will have made those who have a, a you know who have a sort of um a violent tendency even worse um so uh, it's horrible it was it was really interesting because um, thank you for that Sue because I think that there's the it particularly affects young people I think so we have a daughter who's uh, 22 uh, and she's um, engaged her her boyfriend lives with us as well well her fiance lives with us as well and we had two more people living with us so one uh, young woman was made homeless at the beginning of the lockdown so she just sent me a message saying what shall I do the council didn't house her. It refused. It ignored her. So I said, well, we'll make a bed for you. You will come and live here, you know. Uh, and so she did. She lived with us for three months. And you could see how difficult it was for someone who was used to a very extrovert life. She worked in a pub. She wanted to be with people. And so she was stuck with these two oldies and three other people. And it's like, we're good. this is family life. Well, well done. <laughs> Who's well done. cooking now? We have a small kitchen that's about a meter of table space. And we're like, who's cooking now? And like all these dishes. We don't have a dishwasher. We don't have a, a clothes dryer. But we do have a garden. So people would go out into the garden. So it was, it was really interesting sort of watching what a sort of a modern young person who's used to a really busy nightlife just zero in in, in one night it was gone she's like w w when are they opening when are they it's like it's not gonna happen you're stuck with me tonight <laughs> oh well done you're doing your it was, bit this time More it was hilarious yes it well was a different done. kind of wilderness and a di very different kind of wilderness yes wow I, I completely agree with you that for people who are, have no garden, this time must have been, like even in here in the Czech Republic, you know, even my children would say, oh, I wonder what my friend, blah, blah, is doing because he lives in block of flats, you know, and he yeah. can't go out, you know, mm. that's really, it must be really tough. Yeah. Is there anyone yeah. else who wants to share, by the way? There's so many other women in here. Mm. Would you like to share? About your experience. Okay. I just wanted Sorry. to say that it's just so interesting how everyone's experience of this is so different and that you can't really generalize about how it is for anyone, anywhere, anything. And we just have to take it as it is. And it's really heartening to hear these different stories because I think my experience is so different from everyone. Oh, you know, we're all just so different. So I just really wanted to like say that that you, you it's really hard to talk generalizations about all this and that just whatever we're doing we just got to try and make the best of it and help each other as well i think it's we've always known that everyone's got a story everyone's got some burden some some pain somewhere and i feel that this time how we can connect and help each other is to just accept yeah. that we yeah. all live through shit in different ways and there is no answer that there is no right there's no wrong you know one thing might affect someone this way and another one might not be affected mm. in this way but to react to other stuff i think this just listening to other people's stories and accepting that we're all different you know that plays into the racism theme that goes on at the moment that plays into the domestic violence stories we've we've all got pain somewhere and just mm -hmm. accepting that 
no one's perfect and everyone's yeah. got shit going on <laughs> excuse my language <laughs> so, um we're saying that some time ago when we first talked about these shit times and how important it is to have somebody to tell them okay i feel shitty today which i think um was good about these times that um when i did feel shitty i knew i could call somebody and um these friends who usually were at work or something they always had time to listen to me which was great you know that in those times we kind of all at home and um as much as I didn't follow social media, I did have a lot of phone calls with my friends, so that was good. <laughs> that is good. I think, you know, I've, I've read a lot about, um, you know, that this sort of tsunami of, of mental health um, uh, difficulties that await at the end of, of lockdown, particularly for young people, but lots of people, mm -hmm. I think. And certainly, um, uh, this little um, job that I have, um, uh, we all sort of stay in touch with our, each other. And um, as a, a broad generalisation, I don't really want to make it a generalisation, but some of the younger people that I work with are really, really struggling um, with this lockdown because everything that they have ever known um, is different now. And yeah. um, and uh, and it's i don't know um it's really difficult to be able to um convince them that life will be okay again at some point because um because they you know they're just you know at sort of 19 20 21 they're just um emerging into their you know their own lives um just trying to work out who they are. And I mean, I always say, I, I still don't know who I am, but um, you know, I, I've got a slightly more idea than I had at, at 21. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm acutely aware of the fact that, that these, that quite a lot of young people that I know to be, I can't remember who, who just used the word, but you know, so very outgoing, very sort of, you know, because they, they belong to a big sort of social circle and do stuff are actually, really really struggling at the moment and it's hard i hope that they get back to where they were because they're um it's otherwise they're really you know going to continue continue to struggle for quite a long time i know that that's just come focusing on one small group but it's a group that i'm quite concerned about I, I would agree with you, Sue. I, I feel that as well as, as somebody who's worked in education for for many years, and that's sort of also my dig, my my masters at the moment is is looking at that that you know what what happens to to uh, to our young people. Um, it was interesting because one of the young people who lived with us was used to pub drinking and drank a lot, but we're not a drinking house. We don't drink here. We don't really oh let's have a beer. But it was interesting because she said, I'm sitting here, she said, and all I want to do is just drink. I said, uh, and, and she said, I don't want to now. I, 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 and we ended up talking. Yeah. We talked instead. And so she'd have one can of something, um, but we, she just talked, yeah. which was um, so, so rather than drinking your worries away, um, she okay. was yeah because i i am a i'm a face-to-face -face communicator so i don't like this online thing that much because i will see my one or two one friend at a time for a coffee somewhere so it just became like our house was that place uh, where we would have we would talk to until sort of, I don't know, three four in the morning um and she discovered things about her own life her own heritage and she had, you know her mixed heritage uh, and you know that she could she she was from, descended from um uh, um, first nations canadians and she'd never spoken to her father so she spoke to her father for the first time in her life while she was here so it was it was um, it, it gave her some some boldness and and i think that when young people have connections with older women i think it makes a difference to them but they don't have that connection so much anymore in broken families um so i think that as an older woman i i was very happy to be that person mm. uh, so we need to make ourselves available as well 
Mm. And I, for me, the lockdown did that. <laughs> well, well, well done. that's maybe one of the opportunities then, mm. you know, in terms of trying to find what we would count as opportunities for ourselves. So, yeah. And thank goodness, because you enabled that for her. So she may be yeah. that maybe she'll go on and mm. um, take other chances now. Yes. Yeah. But 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 I think that we don't look at that somehow. We just look at young people as a block. 22 year olds 23 year olds you know in society oh they're not doing this or they're doing that um they're the brexit generation or whatever it is and we don't really see them as individuals because when you bring a young person into your home it throws everything out doesn't it they have to connect at a completely different level um mm. almost as strangers really but it was, uh, I think it was so worth it. I wouldn't go back. It was well different, but it was, uh, uh, you know. Incredible, Susanna. Well done. Um, I, I was thinking as you were talking about um, young uh, people being quite um, troubled by, by the situation. I feel really strongly that in this respect, because we, we, kind of as a society here as well, maybe not so much as in Britain, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but we have lost the connection with nature and with being there, you know, because we spend loads, uh, most of our time indoors. And I think, you know, um, mankind as such, we're always outdoors mostly, you know, and it's only in the last few centuries or um, that we spent so much time being indoors and I think it would help um, everyone so much if, if you know um, they would get used to the routine of being outside you know just maybe having some um, circles like friend circles going out and um, talking outside you know meeting and talking or um, doing you know walks walk together or and I think it's it's really important to kind of um, make make a routine of it and let the young people kind of find their way to it. Uh, I know I don't know who it was. Maybe Sue or somebody was saying that she's a viv, um, quite um, she's a cyclist and a runner. And yeah, <laughs> I think it really kind of the sport things also help, but. I feel I've also had in my life, um, I always loved sport and loved movement. Um, and I moved a lot and I used to go running, but now uh, as I'm older and I don't have so much time, I, I realized um, it's enough for me to be outside. I don't have to run. I don't have to, like if I can, that's great. And if I if I um, want to go for a cycle or, or a run, I, I do it. But uh, even if I don't, then I just go for a walk. It it gives me so much perspective, you know, like it catch you from all that I, you know, that's going on my in my head or in my life. And I just feel that young people, um, unless they have brought up in a family where where this was um, a ritual and they learned how to do it, uh, they don't know that they have this opportunity. I don't know. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely spot on there because a lot of the young people that I've worked with have never, they don't, they, we live in the countryside and they don't go out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think that people don't really even realize how much it helps them with their like psychological health, you know, yeah. <laughs> like my father-in-law, um, bless him, he was a great man. He was very kind and everything, but he didn't really, um, he was never taught to go outside for walks and stuff. He loved cooking and mushroom picking. That was his outside walk. But if we ever met somewhere, I always make sure we, we have to have to walk to the spot where we met. And then the next walk, next day he called me and said, it was so nice. I felt so great the next day. Let's do it again. <laughs> and then when I called him again, he was a little bit lazy. So he said, oh, no, no, let's meet in this pub. We don't, that's, you know, it's a long walk. We have to walk there. I'm like, no, <laughs> let's meet in this one. And, you know, like some people are maybe from nature, they're la lazy, so they don't want to 
it. But then when they do it, they just feel much, much better, I think, you know. So that's, that's, you know, exactly what we were talking about, like how it can help us. So it can help us maybe to realize that there's some easy, very easy things that can make us feel better and that we have just in our surroundings on the doorstep and we don't use those resources much, I think. Yeah, you just certainly mm. don't need to be a sporty person to go to enjoy exactly. the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't be running. No, almost <laughs> likely. My I'm balance, not, my I'm balance is. <laughs> my balance is so bad uh, cars go very very fast here i'd be dead i'd be dead within a minute or so but and i definitely won't be running around here oh my dear god well, you know your boundaries that's a good i thing. do i do very much so. i when i was beginning to recover um i i i would drive to the woods and i could i couldn't walk very far but i literally walked the, a, a little bit and came back and sat in the car I was so exhausted but over time I've built up my um, strength to do more so I can just go and sit in the woods if I need to I think it's exactly what as you're saying that's yeah. so good just sit in the woods you know the, the birds are singing and it, it just makes you feel so kind of alive and you know and yeah. so calm and peace and it, it gives you energy i think just sitting in the woods forest that's bathing yeah. yeah definitely forest that's bathing. the japanese Therapy. thing isn't it it's yeah. yeah i remember reading about thinking yeah that sounds like me <laughs> my um, oh. i'll tell you a story my my friend she's a psychotherapist and we were talking about this um topic one day and he told me when i'm old when i'm really old i have this dream <laughs> i'm going to build um my uh office like for therapy you know uh, clients in the woods where there will be no road to get to and my clients will have to walk for two hours through the woods to get to me and when they get there they're almost like they'll be fine you know? oh, they are healed by then yes exactly. and then they need they just give him a check and then they walk back exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll feel so invigorating and so much better yeah. Oh, thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, thank Bye, you. Michelle. Bye, Michelle. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, we um we have a a, a thing in um uh well, I've got somebody from Edinburgh here, but um uh, certainly in, in Scotland um and uh it, was, it started at the time actually that my children were at school called Forest Schools. Yeah. Um, where um where part anyway of the teaching is taken into um, wooded areas and and so you know um, they tick all the boxes that they have to tick through you know literacy and numeracy and everything like this by kind of like counting birds and building things and, and things like that but um, you know from what everybody has said and from what I know I think that probably only has to be a good a good thing to be able to learn in a in a oh uh, totally definitely uh, the outdoor um environment and for something that you said um is it susanna from it is yes um, uh, you know i used to work with um kids in london years and years ago kids who had been in trouble with the law um and we got to take them away sometimes um you know to do activities and things and they were always good times actually but you know, it, it was very sad, and I'm talking several decades ago now, but very sad that many of the young people that we worked with had actually never been away from a place that has street lights. Yeah. And so when you took them away from an urban environment which was lit all the time, they actually found it very, very um, strange and, and, and threatening just to even be in darkness. And so, um, for all that I'm very lucky that I live in this in this lovely environment, thank goodness I do. Um, but um, you know, there will still be lots and lots of people and young people who um, have never experienced a wood, have never, you I, know, yeah. never been into a kind of like a proper that there may be no park and so there'll no trees and things like that, but never been into the heart of a of a, a, a deep wood or a, or a forest and, and you know have to remember that, that just because i have access to all of this 
there are so many people that don't and uh this, yeah this disconnection from nature is the same with the meat eaters that have no idea where meat comes from you know yeah, yeah. we we were so disconnected through the industrialization in the last generation and yeah it's it harms us all actually thing. well yeah. thank you for me mentioning the fo the forest school i think that uh, i i'm half finnish so from northern finland my, my, my parents live there you know finland children young children they only start school at seven but they can spend whole days outside mm -hmm. it, it's not called forest school it's just school and literally you can spend all day so you have different clothes for outside and you come and change and then you you're off for the day you, you know it's uh, uh, it's just education, isn't it? Hello. <laughs> Sorry, it's my son came back from work. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the outdoors is so important for our for our well being, um, particularly um, if you're if you're little and you just want to climb trees and hop around in the woods. Absolutely, schooling in Scotland, um, they're talking about outdoor bringing in outdoor education more. Yeah. So I hope. I really, really hope that's going to be one of the changes that will actually take place that we learn to have more nature connection and and learn that because of we're outside we can focus much more much better um mm. on academic stuff it just gives mm. us the energy the yeah the live liveliness and <laughs> it's all in the balance really even, yes, even, even movement actually um that you know some we're all different but quite a lot of young people actually need to learn and move to take in information um you know yes sitting at um um susanna you probably find this quite interesting I, what my 26 year old son is um autistic and dyspraxic and um and so we did quite a lot of um once we discovered it quite um sort of uh, moving with him when he was younger he um, and he actually learned his um, tables by doing something called the cross crawl, which is a brain gym kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, I could go on about that for ages. I won't go on about that. But what we do know is that, that certain people um, uh, really do um, need to be moving to be able to um, to um, get their brain to connect with what absolutely what to connect yeah. with. And so all of that, all of that stuff is. Uh, I think neuroscience is just amazing, and um, I wish I had gone down that path myself earlier. But um, but you know, it, it, you know, it is environment, but it's also moving, and and the fact that our bodies and our brains, as you know, that our physical body and the, uh, the brain and the the rest of the body is so interconnected, and 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 you need to move to be able to to do stuff. And and some of us need to be outdoors in order to get Absolutely. that connection. I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole it package. is it a is a whole package, and, and we've lost. Uh, I was a home educator before the lockdown, so we home educated our daughter yeah. until she was hello. <laughs> we home educated her until she was sixteen, and I, it's been so interesting, sort of watching people's reactions as in, oh, my children are in the house again, and I'm thinking we did so much outdoors. We just wandered in the woods. We just walked around places before, you know. Um, and now people are saying, oh, it's such hard work for parents. I'm like, that's parenting. <laughs> that, that's that's parenting you know that's part of the job uh, but yeah it, it's it i think it has been very hard because people are not used to those things and i think that maybe if we if we understand that there's more to parenting than just homework it's also about the outdoors and about how you eat and how you sense food and like you were saying sue how you connect your brain to your body through movement and 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 uh, exercise and uh, it's not just the screen, which I think a lot of children now are, have had to depend on because their teacher is in the screen, so they have to watch them, mm. you know. Um, it's not healthy. As you were saying about the forest schools, what I found here was quite good that on um, a lot of schools, because uh, I think it's been maybe three weeks since um, our children went back to school, and some of them, even at Oh, they had to wear what do you call this um masks yes thank you so they had <laughs> face masks. masks face masks at schools which like you know in the classroom is really horrible but if they went outside they didn't have to do that so 
a lot of um, classrooms, like if the places were uh, kind of um, in the thinking in the same kind of um, mindset. Uh, yeah, mindset. Uh, so they would take the children outside and them, you know, on um, on the grass in the woods and, and do the maths. You know, count me. <laughs> you know, how many trees they there are surrounding all of us, or you know, like you can do it. Um, differently if you if you um, want to and it's actually been even a little easier to go outside with the uh, people than normal um, in, the, in the situation in this country I don't know about Scotland but in this country like that a lot of schools here are um, very they, they they don't have space anymore they're just like concrete playgrounds with mm -hmm. things drawn on them and so for them, they're also worried that you might spread infection through if people spat on the concrete. It's different to being in the woods, isn't it? When the rain washes things and so on. But if you have just a hard ground, that's mm. not any kind of normal, is it? Yeah. So um, I would like to ask Anna and Susanna to uh, what, how, how can people find more about the work they, they do and connect with the activities you, you develop regarding going outdoors, even if we are not all based in the same place, but hopefully more people will see this and they can hopefully connect with you. Thank you. So Wonder Women, I mentioned it before, it's, it's the spelling, people always get that wrong. It's <laughs> Wonder with an A and Women with an E. Um, you can find me on Facebook and on Instagram at Wonder Women Scotland <clears throat> and on Twitter on Wonder Women 9. The website is wonder-women.co.uk and my business is all about mindfulness and nature connection and adventure. So come check it out. It would be lovely to meet you one day. Are you part of the Wonder Society, Anna? Not here. I can as can I assume I am? I don't know. Have you have <laughs> you seen have you seen the book, the the the, uh, the book the about Wonder the wonder society? Yeah, I'll, I'll have you check it out? Yeah, it's fascinating. It it's about just wondering. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. nice. I will check it out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and as for me. Um, as I was saying, I'm kind of, at the moment, I'm in the course uh, for mothers which have been on maternity leave and are going back to work. And um, it's a computer course, uh, and I'm a participant on this course. And uh, it's the uh, results uh, of the course is that we are, com uh, are making virtual firms that, um, we would like to, or creating firms, companies that we would like to work um, at, and we're making web pages and leaflets and blah blah blah, um, based on the computer work that we're learning. But um, with that, I, um, me and two friends from this course, uh, I, when I used to live in Scotland, me and um, Anna were good friends. And when she started doing Wonder Woman, oh. I was like, wow, I would love to do something like that. <laughs> and, and so she's been quite a good inspiration for me. And uh, here in the Czech Republic, I'm not sure that people would um, pay enough for me to get by because um, the UK de democracy is way further. Like we've had, um, I don't know how many years of communism and, and people uh, here, it, it's different. But I thought, you know, why don't you, why don't I live my dream through this virtual company and, you know, um, try to research it in the virtual way. So now at the moment, we're like working on it with two friends and <laughs> my uh, company in tech is uh, called Wild Women or something like that. And who knows, maybe, you know, it will become in reality one day as well. But at the moment, it's just virtual. And um, I am uh, very much into um, wild swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the Republic doesn't have any sea, but I do swim in rivers or lakes here. And I 
have been taking friends and whoever wants to um, because the Wim Hof method, which you've probably heard of, is quite getting quite popular in this country. So people are asking me, is it the same or, you know, like, what do I know about it? And um, thanks to Wim Hof, uh, the cold water or wild swimming is um, becoming more popular. And it's, it's great. It's one of, like, um, a very good resources for everyone's life and energy or getting more energy out of uh, you know simple things um so yeah <laughs> so i don't run any business like anna has said but hopefully in the future i could be helpful in um this kind of or this field similar like that <laughs> great and if you want to connect with me i'll be happy but you can do it maybe through anna is that right can can people write in you forward my email Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thanks, everyone. No, it's been so cool. Such a nice conversation to have with you all. It's a really good, good way to start the day into our mid morning. <laughs> I know. I had to get up for this, guys. Jeez. <laughs> I was thinking because you, I, you are normally getting up at one o'clock, right? I had an alarm on to wake wow. up for this. Oh, well done, oh, Sana. Well done. Much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. It's been very inspiring. Thanks. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. It was thank lovely. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh. right, well, take I care. Have a lovely day. Day. You hope we all stay uh, safe and th this experience will all help us you know, in a positive way because um, as I was saying I don't um, don't want to get fear out of it but I, I, I do feel that it's good that this has happened. I, I don't, don't wish anyone to be ill or anything. As a whole, you know, for, for mankind, it's, um, there is a great opportunity for us. So hopefully we'll all get good things out of that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all the best to you, wherever you all are, you know. <laughs> Same to you. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. thank you. Bye. bye. <laughs>